FADEC has two independent methods of controlling rotor speed, rotor speed protection. There's what we would call the red line limiting feature, which limits the red line, the N1 and the N2 uh, rotor speeds to the red line value. And if for whatever reason that doesn't operate properly, there is what we call an overspeed protection built into the FADEC. The overspeed protection feature essentially would prevent an engine from an uncontrollable acceleration to the point where it, would, it could possibly uh, destroy itself. Uh, the rotor speed protection will automatically take control of the engine if either the N1 or the N2 rotor speed exceeds its red line by about 5%. The FADEC will command the fuel metering unit to fail safe to minimum fuel flow and the engine will not respond to the thrust lever. Depending on the altitude where this, if this should occur, if it occurs at high altitude, the engine may stay uh, lit at this minimum idle fuel flow condition. But as the airplane descends to lower and lower altitudes, this minimum fuel flow condition is not sufficient to keep the engine running and it'll flame out. If the engine does not flame out, the flight crew can either let it run at min fuel flow or shut it down and attempt to restart. Engine surge can be categorized into two uh, types. The first we would call a recoverable surge. This is the simpler of the two cases where an engine will surge and immediately without any input from the flight crew, uh, stop surging. The more serious case would be what we call a non-recoverable surge. In this case, the engine will continue surging until the flight crew takes some action. The procedure for an engine surge would be to pull the thrust lever back to idle and then to check the EGT display. If the engine is continuing to surge, the EGT will continue to, to rise. At that point, there is uh, little choice for the flight crew but to shut the engine down to keep from exceeding the EGT limit. If by pulling the thrust lever back to idle, the EGT begins to come down, then the flight crew has successfully stopped the surge. The flight crew will know if the surge has been stopped if EGT is not increasing. It seems to be running normal. Then the throttle back up. Take the rudder trim out. In that case, the thrust lever can be moved to any setting that will continue to maintain surge-free operation. Auto throttle for engage. Three systems on the engine have considerable effect on surge margins. Variable state of vein system controls the first four stages of the high pressure compressor. The system adjusts the flow capacity of the high pressure compressor and is controlled by the FADEC through the actuator, which drives linkages and eventually adjusts the vane angles to vary the flow through the compressor. This is one of the high pressure compressor surge bleeds. This valve is controlled by the FADEC as a function of engine thrust and flight condition to maximize engine surge margin. Finally, we'll discuss another feature designed to improve engine stability. The 2.5 bleed is located in between the low pressure and high pressure compressors. It is controlled by this actuator down here. The FADEC varies 2.5 bleed position dependent on engine thrust and flight condition to maximize surge margin. 
the bleed actually wraps around the entire engine and exhausts into the fan duct through these slots, which also wrap around the engine. get that procedure out and we'll take a look at it. If an engine is shut down in flight, the relight envelope will appear on the ICAST display. Now outside of the relight envelope, starts are not assured, but that should not prevent the flight crew from attempting a light, a relight, uh, if they happen to be outside the relight envelope. In the interest of flight safety, you may still attempt a relight. If the engine is shut down for reasons such as an engine surge or an EGT limit is exceeded, the relight may still be attempted. That's no reason to keep the engine shut down. However, if the cause of the shutdown was either an engine fire or there was obvious engine damage, then we do not recommend that you attempt a relight. No fire is indicated. APU start. During the relight attempt, if crossbleed is required, the ICAS will, will indicate that crossbleed is needed. Also, during a relight, there will be an indicator on the N2 display at 15%. This is the point where the fuel control switch should be placed in the run position. It's important for the flight crew to record any amount of time that it's been windmilling with zero oil pressure. This will help their maintenance people, once the airplane lands, determine whether any maintenance action is necessary. The FADEC usually operates in the normal mode. However, if a fault or discrepancy is detected, and neither channel can operate in the normal mode, the FADEC will automatically switch itself into the alternate control mode. We've got a problem with the EEC on the left engine. If an engine should revert to the alternate control mode, the procedure calls for pulling the thrust lever back on the affected engine to a mid-thrust lever position, and then pushing the EEC control switch. And then thrust may be restored back up to the original setting. Then the other engine should also be placed in the alternate control mode the same way, pulling the thrust lever back to the mid position, selecting the EC control switch, and restoring thrust back to its normal position. I'd like to explain why you have to do a manual switch into the alternate mode after an automatic reversion has taken place. I have a, a plot of thrust versus thrust lever angle for the normal mode. And I'm going to show approximately what the regular alternate mode would look like. If an automatic reversion has taken place <clears throat> from the normal mode, the FADEC has been designed to maintain the same thrust. This is to prevent any uncommanded thrust changes. In other words, if you don't move the thrust lever angle, you'll get the same thrust after the automatic reversion as the normal mode. However, if you move the thrust lever angle, there's a possibility that you may have less thrust than what the normal mode would produce. The, the FADEC would follow this relationship, but at this level, and may produce less thrust than normally available. Consequently, we suggest that you manually switch to the alternate mode 
as soon as possible at the pilot's discretion. And what will happen is the FADEC will transition up to this schedule. And therefore guarantee that you will always get at least as much thrust as the normal mode would provide. Incidentally, if the fault that caused the uh, FADEC to revert to the alternate control mode, if it was a transient fault which corrected itself, it's possible to reselect the FADEC back into the normal control mode. This would be done by a second push of the EEC control switch. If by pushing the EEC control switch back in, the normal mode returns, then the engine has re reverted back into the normal control mode and the operation can continue uh, in the normal mode. The advantages of being in the normal mode are that the thrust ratings will be automatically set and maintained on the engine and you can also use the auto throttle. However, we want to emphasize that even in the alternate control mode, the FADEC will still protect the rotors from overspeeding, but thrust overboost is possible. The engine vibration display on, on ICAS is meant for trend monitoring purposes, in other words, the use of an engine condition monitoring or ECM program. Therefore, there are no in-flight vibration limits. And as a result, there is no requirement to shut an engine down based solely on a, a high vibration indication. The flight crew should be most aware of two ICAST messages concerning the oil system. One for the oil filter and the other for low oil pressure. The oil, oil filter message, if that should appear, the procedure is to pull the thrust lever back on that engine in an effort to put the message out. If the message disappears by doing this, then the engine operation can be continued with the thrust lever at that lower setting. If by pulling the thrust lever all the way back to idle, the oil filter message still appears, then if flight conditions permit, the engine should be shut down. The reason for this is that once the oil filter message appears, the oil filter is approaching a bypass condition, which may result in engine bearing damage. The main oil pump is underneath the engine on the back side of the gearbox. This is the oil tank, and on the front face of the oil tank is the oil filter. This is the fuel oil cooler, and in here is the air oil heat exchange. The FADEC controls flow through the fuel oil cooler and air oil heat exchanger to maintain acceptable fuel and oil temperatures. The low oil pressure message means that the oil pressure has dropped below the 70 PSI limit. When this occurs, the thrust lever should be pulled back to idle. If the oil pressure remains below 70 PSI, the engine should be shut down if flight conditions permit. The ICAST status messages are meant to determine the dispatchability of the airplane. As a result, they are not intended to be used in flight. Let's take, for example, an engine control message. If the engine control message should appear as a status message level only in flight, that's telling the flight crew that the, the FADEC has detected a fault but it's compensating for that fault and operation may be continued. There's no requirement to shut the engine down based on this or any other status message only. The, 
event record button on ICAS can be used if the flight crew detects a abnormality that they wish to save for maintenance purposes. By pushing the event record button, a snapshot of all the engine parameters as well as all the flight parameters, like altitude, Mach number, and airspeed, are recorded in the ICAS memory and can be used by the maintenance crew once the airplane gets on the ground. Let me emphasize, though, that we do not intend that pushing the event record button interfere in any way with any abnormal procedures that the crew needs to perform. Once the abnormal procedure is complete, if time permits, we recommend recording the, um, the event record button and also to record in the logbook that the event record button has been pushed. During most of the descent, the engine will be governed by what we refer to as the min idle speed schedule. This is done for, for two reasons. It operates the engine at the, the lowest fuel flow needed to keep the engine running during the descent, thereby saving fuel. And it also minimizes the thrust output of the engine, which improves the rate of descent of the airplane. Speed bug to 180. Localizer's captured. Flaps 5. 5 degrees. As the flight crew configures the airplane for approach, the FADEC will automatically increase the idle speed from the minimum setting to approach idle. What it does is improve the engine's acceleration characteristics. This can be needed if the airplane needs to do a go-around. It also improves the acceleration once the airplane touches down and reverse thrust is selected. It improves the uh, acceleration of the engine into reverse thrust. Auto throttles are off. If reverse thrust is selected, the FADEC will automatically govern engine thrust to prevent overboost. The FADEC will also prevent N1 and N2 from exceeding redline speed. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. Spoilers are up. Turn reverse. Auto brakes are off. 80 knots. Now, as the airplane slows down, we recommend coming out of reverse thrust by 60 knots. There's a possibility of ingesting foreign objects if it's used below 60 knots. A lot more information and detail uh, available to our customers in the form of a uh, book we have, uh, 767 PW4000 Operations Review. In this, it's this, we discuss in more detail than we have today uh, various aspects of the PW4000 engine and its operation. We hope this video has been helpful. Please consult your operations manual for details.